Embraer celebrated its 50th anniversary in 2019, where they debuted a film that spoke about the founder's childhood dream of flying and how he faced challenges to make it a reality. Osiris Silva started the aircraft revolution in Brazil, intending to make it one of the world's leading aerospace companies. This story has unknown facts that will leave you inspired. So let's dive right into the origins of this aviation giant. Osiris Silva, born on January 8, 1931 in Bauru, Brazil, was always interested in aviation from a very young age. When he was a child, he used to go to the local aero club in his neighborhood to check the planes that used to fly there. He was shocked to find that there were only foreign airplanes in the club, even with the genuine Brazilian legacy left by Santos Dumont. This is where his dream took form. He fantasized about a day when people would see national planes tearing through the sky. Osiris's passion was one of a kind, filled with determination for a new future. He even met with his friend Zico in their office in a public park down the street to talk about aircraft every day. However, nothing prepared Osiris for the future that awaited him, one where he helped bring Embraer to life. The same company that grew to become the world's third largest commercial aircraft producer. Osiris began his aviation journey when he joined the Air Force Preparatory School in 1948, linked to the Brazilian Air Force, or FAB. Since he was a genius in this field, it took him only four years to receive his military license. Aviation is proof that given the will, we can achieve the impossible. Edward Vernon Rickenbacker Besides his love for aircraft, Osiris loved his nation immensely and decided to devote his life to the Brazilian Air Force and served there until 1955 when he moved to the National Air Mail till 1958. During a trip to Rio de Janeiro for his technical pilot recertification, Osiris heard the news that the Technological Institute for Aeronautics was administering degrees for aeronautical engineering in Brazil. Overjoyed, he decided to enroll that year in 1959 and graduated three years later in 1962 at the age of 31. He then went on to lead the Department of Aircraft at the Institute of Research and Development, where he felt the desire to produce a national airplane. He was practically transported to the time he spent hours dreaming in the local aero club of his neighborhood as a child, only this time he was making that dream a reality. Osiris knew that if he had to beat his competitors, which included foreign multinationals, he had to make the planes practically perfect and design them according to the customer demands. It's often said that rejection gives you more power to push forward, and that's precisely the case of Osiris Silva. When he finally presented his idea of a regional aircraft with 9 to 16 passengers, it was rejected by the industry because it was smaller than the other aircrafts. During this time, Osiris received an invitation to complete a master's degree in the United States, and even though he was involved in the design of the new plane, he accepted the challenge. He went to study at the California Institute of Technology for a year. In 1966, Osiris formed the prototype of the Bandirante, a reference to the pioneers of the Brazilian national integration. The year 1968 made history with the first flight of the Bandirante on October 22nd. After Guarantanguera Airport was forced to close due to a storm in 1969, Brazil's president Arthur da Costa e Silva was forced to make an unscheduled landing in São José dos Campos, where he was met by Osiris Silva, as the key local authorities were waiting in another location for the head of state. Osiris used this unexpected opportunity to convince Costa e Silva to establish a mixed economy company that would enable a Brazilian aircraft manufacturer. On January 2, 1970, Embraer was formed, and its facilities were set up in San Jose dos Campos. In addition to the Bandeirante, the company was also commissioned to assemble 112 fighter jets ordered by the Brazilian Air Force. Now, Osiris was very astute and calculative. Since it was the aviation industry, everything had to be accurate. He made sure to look into the design of all the produced aircraft. Until 1985, he oversaw several initiatives aimed at ensuring Embraer's long-term success. The company was now known for discovering and exploring latent consumer needs, which was crucial to their growth and therefore paved the way for the company's current role. 
After leading Embraer to the pinnacle of the aviation industry, Bazira's accepted an offer from Brazil President José Sarné to take command of Petrobras in the year 1986. In 1990, he would take over the Brazilian Ministry of Infrastructure and Communications. During Ozira Silva's time away, Embraer started facing difficulties caused by the global economic crisis and the company's heavy investments in failed projects. Ozira's knew he couldn't let the company he founded fall apart, so he returned in 1991 with the sole intention of saving it. With the help of his intelligent management, the company survived and after 1,152 days, it was acquired by the US by a United States financial group, Wasserstein Perella. After a close to impossible turnaround in fortunes that resulted in the survival of Embraer, Osiris left the company in the year 2000 and became president of Farig. He stayed in that position for two years. Since then, Aziras has been an active voice in the country for education during the more recent decades, writing many books and articles on the topic and serving as Dean of UNISA from 2006 to 2008, after which he's been the Dean of Unimonte, a private college in Brazil. Because of the efforts of many visionaries, the Brazilian aviation industry has become a global reference. Still. Osiris Silva is without a doubt one of the greatest among these eternal dreamers. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. It does wonders for the YouTube algorithm so more people can see our videos and so that you can be notified when we launch our next video. We try and put out at least one new one per week and as you can imagine, the research and editing alone of these type of videos takes us close to 18 hours. So we would really appreciate it if you could also check out our Patreon. For just $1 a month, you can support our work. We produce over 12 videos per month, so that is literally 8 cents per video. Thank you so much and we'll see you at our next unmasking.